Good evening, students. Good evening, sir. So you're able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think last class we were doing some problem based on uh, emotional EMF, right? So I think this is the last problem I'm able to see that is solved. Is it right? Okay. Oh, yes. Shall we get started? So can we get started with this problem? Yeah, do this. We'll have a warm up session and then proceed. So railway track running north to south has two parallel rails, one meter apart. Calculate the value of induced DMF between the rails when a train passed at a speed of 90 km per hour. The horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at a phase is 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 4 Weber per meter square. So it is Weber per meter square and the angle of dip is going to be 60 degrees. Students, can you just give me five minutes time? My device is not working. I'll have to restart my system. Just five minutes. Uh, in the meanwhile, copy this question and keep trying.
Yeah, what is the answer question? So 90 kilometer per hour is how many meter per second? 90 into 5 divided by 18. It is 25 meter per second, right? The horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at the place is 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 4 Weber per meter square. So BH is equal to 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 4 and delta is equal to 60 degrees. So what is going to be the value of BE? So, is the answer 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 4? 1.3, I think this 10 power minus 3. But let me do and see. So, last class I would have told you that when you're taking, you need to take the vertical component to consideration. So, BV into length into velocity. So, BV is going to be how much? So, if BH is given, how will you find BV? So, BV divided by BH is equal to tan delta. So, what is going to be the value of BV? It will be 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 4 into tan delta is root 3. Right. So 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 4 into root 3 multiplied with length is how much? 1 into 25. So how much did you say? 25 into 3 is 0.75. Sorry, 7.5. 7.5 into 1.7. Is this what you did? Yes, sir. So 7.5 into 10 to the power minus 4. 0 0.52. 52. Okay. Into 10 power minus 4. Minus 4. But how are you getting 0 0.527 and 1 are there? Is it that? So I directly multiplied as. Oh, so I didn't take 25, sir. So I just took. 0 0.3 and uh, root value as 1.73, sir. But you are getting, you should get 12.75, ma. This value should come out as 12.75. 12 12.75, yes, sir. So 12.75 will come out as 1.275 into 10 power minus 3 volt. This is the answer. Got it? I think there, there is a calculation mistake. Yeah, maybe so. I'll check it, sir. Let's just check it once, okay? Shall I proceed? Uh, two minutes. Okay. Uh, sir? Mm, tell me. I have a, a clarification, sir. Sir, in the assignment that you posted for the fifth chapter, when we open it, um, it has the fourth chapter content. Like, how many problems are there from? Sir, like the what? whole, like the whole PDF is different, sir. Like for uh, instead of magnetism and matter, we have moving charges and magnetism's questions. Okay, I'll check that once. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because there is one chapter from fourth, which is included in the fifth chapter. That is the revolution of electron in a circular orbit, through which you will calculate the angular momentum of it. Except no, sir, the whole PDF is I understand. I, I, I will check it. Okay. I will check it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Shall I proceed? So conductor of length in length one meter falls freely under gravity from a height of 10 meters so that it cuts the lines of force of horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field of this much value. Find the EMF induced in the conductor. So here, you know the length, right? So they told it is falling freely under gravity. So why did they give that information for you to calculate the speed? Right. So how will you calculate the speed? V is equal to root 2 GH. You know this? V square minus U 
square is equal to a s. So v square minus uh, when they say it is false, false freely generally initial velocity will be zero. So zero square into two into g is going to be ten into height is going to be ten. So it is going to be two hundred meter square. So v will be equal to root two hundred. Root two hundred will be ten root two meter. Okay. So what is going to be the EMF? Sir, meter, meter per second. Uh, meter per second. So meter square per second square there. So B is how much? So here you don't have any angle of dip. An angle of dip is not there. You can directly take it as this value itself. 3 into 10 power minus 5 into L is going to be 1 and V is going to be 10 root 2. So 30 into 10 power minus 5 root 2 will be the answer. 30 root 2 into 10 power minus 5. So it should be somewhere around uh, 30 into 1.4 is 42. 42 into 10 power minus 5 should be the answer. Okay. See, it's the same formula everywhere. Okay. So there's not need. I think I solved the other problems also. So could you uh, go to the previous slide? Yeah, yeah, I'll go. So, so we'll leave it for two minutes. Sure, sure. So done, sir. Done, sir. So I would have told you how to find the motion EMF when your object is revolving, right? Half d L square omega. You remember this, no? So this I've explained it here. Right, last class we discussed. Well, actually, we have done some more problems. Okay, then this motional EMF part is over. Ah, we'll do this one because this concept is a connecting factor for the next chapter, alternating current. Right, so do this. There is a rectangular coil of 200 turns of wire. 15 into 40 is the area of it. Makes 50 revolutions per second. That is the frequency about an axis perpendicular to the magnetic field of 0 0.08 Weber per meter square. What is the instantaneous value of induced EMF when the plane of the coil makes an angle with the magnetic lines of 0 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree? So capital N is 200. Area is going to be 15 into 40. That is going to be 600 into 10 power minus 2 meter square. F will be equal to 50 revolutions per second. Then omega is how much? 2 pi into f. That will be 100 pi radians per second. Right. And magnetic field is how much? 0 0.08 Weber per meter square. What is the instantaneous value of induced EMF when the plane of the coil makes an angle with the mag magnetic field? See, plane of the coil makes an angle 0 degree with the coil. Okay. I repeat it. Plane makes an angle 0 degree with the coil implies plane 0 degree with coil implies dash angle made by area with coil, area with magnetic field. 90. It is 90. So what is the answer for the first one?
quote will be the answer for the first one. EMF will be equal to what is the instantaneous EMF generated when a coil is revolving in a magnetic field? That is an that is a generator. It is NBA omega. What is this NBA omega, guys? This I discussed in the previous class. Don't say you forgot. What is NBA omega? NBA omega is the maximum EMF. So NBA omega into sine omega t. This omega t I can write it as theta. So NBA omega into sine of how much should I write the value of omega t as? It is going to be 90 degrees. Am I right? Are you able to understand this point? So N is going to be 500 into B is going to be 0 0.08. That is 8 divided by 100 into area is going to be 600 into 10 power minus 2 into omega is going to be 100 pi into sine 90 is going to be 100 and 100 will get cancelled. So two zeros and this is gone. So eight into six is 48, 48 into five is? Sir, Tell me. so it will be yeah. 200, sir. Which one, 200? So it's given us 200 tons of uh, your take, you rotate it as five. Oh, yeah, it is 200, sorry, okay, 200. Now it's fine. So eight into six is 48, 48 into two is? Nine uh, 200 is 9600. So 9600 pi. Uh, one more mistake. It is yeah, not 10 power yeah, minus yeah. 2, 10 power minus 4. Is there an Anitish? Ah, yes, sir. Into 10 power minus 2 is there actually. It is 96 pi. Did you understand what, what was the mistake? 10, see, a centimeter into centimeter is centimeter square. One centimeter square is 10 power minus 4 meter square. Everything else is fine. So, answer should be 96 pi volt. So, it should be 96 into 3.14 volt. That is the instantaneous EMF. Can you do for the second one? So, second one, what is going to be the angle? So, you tell me the angle. That is enough. Uh, calculation part, you do it later. For second, 60 degree, what is the angle? 30. 60 degree. Yes, 30, because it's 90 minus 60 is what you need to substitute. When it comes to 90, it is 90 Maybe. minus 90, zero. So here the angle that you need to substitute is 30 degrees. Here the angle that you need to substitute is zero degrees. Okay. Right. So what are the concepts that we saw? First, we saw the problem based on flux. Second, we saw the problem based on change of flux. Then uh, I, we need to concentrate on Lenz law. I'll come to that. Uh, then we saw the concepts that are based on motional EMF. Right. Now, the next concept that we are going to see is based on self-induction and mutual induction. Okay. So, okay, tell me what is the self-induction? What does self-induction mean? I want, to, I want somebody to speak. What is your understanding of self-induction? Why is no one speaking? Nobody knows, sir. Guys, speak up. Sir, uh, change of flex in, in a coil will induce a due CMR in, a, in the same coil. Change of flux in a coil due to due to fill that blank. Due to change in current. Due to its own current. It's called self-induction. So there is a phenomenon. Am I right? So then what is mutual induction? And what is the device that works on the principle of mutual induction? The transformer. Transformer. So what is mutual induction basically? You will have two coils, neighboring coils, or one coil within another, right? If the change of current is taking place in one coil, 
then the flux will get generated in the second coil. So change in flux will taking will take place in the second coil, and EMF is generated in the second coil. That kind of a device is called as so that, that, that is a device that works on the principle of mutual induction, right? So for self inductance, what happens is flux through a coil is directly proportional. See, you need to know the theory. Okay, concentrate. So flux through the coil is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. Then when you remove the proportionality symbol, the constant that you introduce is L. What does this L stand for? It's called as inductance. Self. It's in simply called as inductance or self inductance. Both mean the same. Am I clear with this? Now, the whole chapter tells me that if I'm able to differentiate the flux with respect to time and I get a non-zero value, that is going to give me the EMF. So flux is equal to L into I, then what is going to be d phi by dt equal to? Can I write it as L into dI divided by dt? Makes sense. But EMF is equal to minus of negative of d phi by dt. So it is going to be minus L into dI by dt. Am I right? So EMF is equal to minus L into dI divided by dt. Similarly, for mutual induction, what will happen? Flux through the first coil, right? Will be directly proportional to the current in the second coil. Can I write it like that? Why is no one speaking? See, can you come in? Yes, you see. So if there are two coils like this, one coil is like this and another coil is like this. Let's say the number of turns here is N1, the number of turns here is N2. Right? Then let's say current through this coil is I1 and flux through this coil is phi2. Can I say this? Can I say that N2 phi2, that is the flux associated with the second coil because second coil does not have current, is directly proportional to the current that is flowing through the first coil. Makes sense? Yes, sir. Whereas the previous case, what did we do? The flux linked with the coil is directly proportional to its own current. So N2 phi2 is directly proportional to I1. So N2 phi2 will be equal to M times I1, where this M is what is called as mutual induction, inductance. But this M will have a prefix to 1. So what is this M to 1 going to be equal to? It is going to be N2 phi2 divided by I1. Can I say this? In a similar way, can I say N1 phi1 is directly proportional to I2? If at all the current here is I2. Now I'm saying this is the pickup coil. This is the coil which is picking up the EMF. Then N1 phi1 will be equal to I2. So N1 phi1 will be equal to M1 to I2. Can I say this? Which implies M12 is equal to N1 phi1 divided by I2. Makes sense. So what is going to be the SI unit for it? Henry. It's going to be Henry. Right. Similarly. Sir, uh, you can you just explain how the subscript M21 came? M21 is mutual inductance of in the second coil due to the first. See, it's very simple. M21, remember like this, two stands for the coil which is picking up the flux. One stands for the coil which is giving the current. Okay. Okay. Similarly, M12 will be pick up coil divided by the one which is giving the current. That is the electromagnet. Okay. So again, if you differentiate on both the sides, you'll get EMF is equal to minus M into DI by DT. Have that in your mind. 
Now the next question is, if I take a solenoid of length L and the number of turns capital N, then what is going to be the inductance in it? The mutual inductance will be equal to mu naught N square A divided by L or mu naught small N square A into L. Is that clear? So this one you remember mu naught capital N square A divided by L or mu naught small n square A divided by L. Okay. So just for the sake of understanding what I'll do is I'll explain it. See, if there is a long solenoid like this, which has n turns and length L, let's say the current flowing through it is I. Okay. So what is the magnetic field associated with this coil? It is going to be mu naught into small n into I. Accept it. I want an SO. Yes, sir. Okay. So listen, if I take A to be the area of this, the cross-sectional area of this particular coil, okay? I know, okay, R, if I take it as the radius, if I take R to be the radius, then what is going to be the area of the coil? It will be pi R square. Accept it. Now tell me, what does self-inductance tell you? L is equal to N into phi divided by I. All of them. That is the only equation we have. N phi is equal to L into I. Da. L is equal to N phi by I. So N into, what is the value of phi? Magnetic field into area into cos angle. In the angle one is zero because magnetic field and area are in the same direction. The whole divided by I. So capital N into, what is the value of B? It will be mu naught into small n into I into area is going to be pi r square, the whole divided by i, i and i will get cancelled. Are you getting that expression mu naught into capital N? So this is the expression. Small n is equal to capital N divided by L. So capital N will be small n into L. So small n into L into this n is there. So n square into pi r square is going to be the value of L when you write it in terms of small n. Whereas when you write it in terms of capital N, you can write it as mu naught into this capital N is already there. And what about the small n? It will become capital N divided by L. So can I write it as N square into pi R square divided by L. Now revisit that page and observe. Are they both the same? Only difference is instead of pi r square, they wrote it as area. Are you guys able to understand this? It's only three-step derivation. Clear with this or not? Yes, sir. Similarly, if you want to calculate the mutual inductance of two closely wound solenoids, then what you will do is you will write it like this. Mu naught into n1 into n2 into a divided by l. So remember it like this. Instead of having n square, you will have n1 into n2 all over. And when you have two coaxial solenoids, so this is a derivation from your textbook. When you have two coaxial solenoids of equal length, right? when you have two coaxial solenoids of equal length, then M12 will be equal to M21. M12 will be equal to M21. I thought my video was on. Sorry, guys. M12 will be equal to M21. Clear? So having said this, let's try to solve some problems. So can you do this? Sir, uh, can you show this the my previous slide? Hey, sir. What is the self-inductance of a coil in which the magnetic flux of 40 milliweber is produced when 2 ampere current goes through it?
So this is stuck, sorry. It's very simple, guys. One step answer. So L is equal to 5 by I. 40 into 10 power minus 3 divided by 2. So it is going to be 20 into 10 power minus 3 entry. Or it is going to be 20 milli entry. Am I right? Simple. Now, there is a 200 turn coil. So N is equal to 200. There is a 200 turn coil of 20 into 10 power minus 3 Henry, which carries a current of 4 into 10 power minus 3 ampere. Find the flux linked with the coil. Flux is equal to how much? So phi will be equal to L into I. So actually N into phi is what is L into I. But what did they ask in the question? They are very clear. They didn't ask the flux linked with the total coil with each turn of the coil. So flux is equal to L into I divided by N. L is how much? 20 into 10 power minus 3 into I is going to be 4 into 10 power minus 3 divided by N is going to be 200. So it is going to be 10 times 2 divided by 5. So it is going to be 0.4 into 10 power minus 6 Weber per turn. Per turn. Make sense? Yes or no, huh? Getting grip over these problems? Simple only, no? Yes, sir. Sir, if it's not given for each turn, it will stay the same, sir. Uh -huh. Each turn, that N is an invalid data. They gave only to confuse you. Okay, each turn, sir. flux linked with the coil, you should only do L into I. Okay, sir. So what is the 4 into 10 power minus 7, or the 0.4 into 10 power minus 6, but they wrote it as Weber. You can write it as Weber per turn, though turn is not a part of the unit. Okay. It is for understanding. If the rate of change of current is 4 ampere per second, so what did they give us? Di by dt is equal to 4 ampere per second, induces an EMF of 20 into 10 power minus 3 volt in a solenoid, then what is going to be the self-inductance of the solenoid? L is equal to how much? So we know that E is equal to L into D. So E is equal to L into Di by dt. I ignore the minus sign because we know the magnitude. So 20 into 10 power minus 3 divided by 4. Answer is 5 into 10 power minus 3. 5 into 10 power minus 3 entry. So L is equal to... I hope you understood everybody. So EMF is this value, 4 is this value, plug in and then find it out. Shall we proceed? Yes, sir. Hmm. Do it fast. An inductor of 5 entry, okay, carries a current of 2 ampere. How many 50 volt self-induced EMF can be made to appear in the conductor? Sorry, how can a 50 volt self-induced EMF be made to appear in a conductor? So EMF is 50 volt. Hmm. What is missing in the problem? time sir uh, e a by dt is 25 so t is what you need to so carry a steady current so when i say steady current it is not changing with respect to time but when would the change take place before you close the battery and when the current has grown from 0 to 2 ampere so after it has reached 2 it is in a steady state condition so 
EMF is 50 is equal to L is 5 into DI. What is the change in current that has taken place? It is 2 in time t. So answer another 5 seconds. So as soon as you close the switch in 5 seconds, you will be able to generate 50 volt of self EMF. Sir. Sir, how is it 5 seconds? 25 oh, sir, 0.2. 1 by 5, 0.2. I'm sorry. I was concentrating on content. I forgot this. So it is 1 by 5, correct? So in 0.2 seconds, but are you able to understand what the, what the question means? That is more important. So the self-induced EMF has got generated when, when the switch was closed. In 0.2 seconds, the current has grown from 0 to 2 ampere in steady state condition. Okay. Uh, sir. Mm -hmm. Tell me. One minute, sir. No, sir, never mind. Okay. okay. So what is the self-inductance of an air core solenoid 50 centimeter long and 2 centimeter radius if it has 500 turns? Please do it faster. What the answer? Sir, is it eight by into ten by nine? Sir, how much did you see? Eight by into. 10 power? Um, sir, 8 pi square into 10 power minus 5. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Sorry, 8 pi square into 10 power minus 5. 8 pi square. I don't know. It's not given in terms of pi square. So I don't know how it is done. On that, 8 pi square means 8 into 3.14. I think that is the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the answer. 72 point something. Okay, 7 point something into, how much did you say is the exponent? 10 power? Minus 5. Correct. So how to do this? What is the formula? L is equal to mu naught n square. N square pi r square by L. By L. So mu naught is how much? It's 4 pi into? 10 power minus 7 into n square is 25 into 10 power 4 into 5, we will leave it as 5 into r square is going to be 4 into 10 power minus 4. So whole divided by uh, 50 into 10 power minus 2. Okay, on solving this, you are getting 8 pi square into 10 power minus 5. Correct, uh? Henry? This is what yes, you told. Sir. Yes, sir. They have given it as 7.89 to 10 power minus 4. Okay. Now do this.
an airport solenoid with length 30 cm area of cross section uh, sir 2 minutes and you are doing good okay Sir, uh, 0 0.0625 approximately. Mm -hmm. 0 0.06? Uh, 2 phi, like approximately. I took pi e and uh, I cancelled pi okay, and 0 point into, into no exponent. No, sir. Uh, I'm getting like 625 pi upon 3 into 10 power minus 4. Mm -hmm. So pi three I cancelled and uh, the ten pi ten pi minus four so zero point zero six move okay, This is what is given here. But keeping the answer aside, is this the formula and steps that you followed? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then we have to check it using. See, I don't want to waste time on calculations. But as long as you have applied the concept right it is okay did everyone understand this so it's basically uh, you're doing... uh, tell me sir the denominator l is there right why did they take it as 0 0.3 into 10 power minus 2 it's 30 centimeter where is it 30 centimeter uh, 30 centimeter is 30 into 10 power minus 2 and what is the length Okay, we'll write and see. No? So, what did they ask? Air pool. So, length is 30 centimeter. Area of cross section is equal to 25 into 10 power minus 4 meter square. Number of turns is 500. Carry the current of 2.5 ampere. The current is suddenly switched off in brief time to the so change in time is 10 power minus 3 seconds. What is the back? Uh, how much is the average back EMF induced across the ends? So EMF is equal to L into dA by dt. So L is how much? Mu naught n square A divided by L into dA divided by dt. Okay. So mu naught is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 into n square is 25 into 10 power 4 into A is going to be 25 into 10 power minus 4, the whole divided by L is going to be 30 into 10 power minus 2 into dt is going to be 10 power minus 3. I think they combined everything at root 0.3. The 30 into 10 power minus 2 is 0.3. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, understood, sir. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So we are done with the problems in this chapter. Okay, I thought I estimated we'll have another first session. Um, okay. So I have to work on the alternating current problem that I'll be able to do it only tomorrow. Uh, so apart from that, is there any other concept from this chapter that you want me to explain? Nothing. Guys, can you speak? No, no doubts. 
Oh, sir. Okay. So I'll do one thing. Actually, it got uh, ended even before the estimated time. Okay. So today you can uh, sit and prepare the alternating current part. And uh, if you have any backlogs in this chapter, practice the problems from your textbook. Uh, in the textbook part, right, there are some problems that are based on mutual inductions um, and uh, self inductance. So try to solve the example problems and try the book back questions also. If there are any doubts, reach out to me. So tomorrow we'll discuss the alternating current part. And on Wednesday, we'll have this magnetism and its matter center. Okay. So if there are no doubts, can we wind up? Sure, the length law. Okay, lens law part, there are not many problems. Anyways, if you want me to explain from the textbook part, I'll do it, which we have already solved it in the class. Yes, sir. Uh, EMI, right? EMI, MC. So this you would have seen in textbook, right? So one minute, I'll do one thing. Ah. So how to solve this problem? So first of all, what does Lenz law speak about? Lenz law says that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux taking place, an EMF will get induced in such a way that it will always try to oppose the cause. Am I right? So it is going to oppose the cause. So when I say this, then how do you apply the concept here? So if you see, so they are saying there are planar loops of different shapes moving out of into a region out of or into a region of magnetic field which is directed normal to the loop away from the reader. Determine the direction of induced EMF in each loop using lens law. Sir, uh, first one is ECBA, like the rectangle. Is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? Uh, clockwise. Okay. So what are the steps to be followed? Tell me. So what are the steps? Sir, to be first, uh, first we see the external magnetic field. Uh, okay, it perfect. is coming outwards. So according to Lenz law, uh, the the Induced hey, no, current no, inside wait, the loop wait. opposes the cause. Into hey, wait, wait, wait. Hey, it is into the plane, sir. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Then anti clockwise. Yeah, it is anti clockwise. That's what I was wondering. It is into the plane. So, first, us yes. uh, look at the direction of the external magnetic field. So, if it is into the plane, so what I suggested is we need to give a sign or a pole to ourselves. Right. If the magnetic field is away from you, then what pole are you acting as? So what is the direction of magnetic field? It is north away pole. from the north pole. It is away from the north pole and your paper is the south pole. So your paper is receiving the magnetic field. We are north pole. Guys, I want a confirmation. Is everyone able to understand this point? Yes, sir. Right. 
so we are north pole means now we need to look at the coil so if the flux is increasing then it will be the same pole as u if the flux is decreasing it will be the opposite pole as u r so remember your north pole now when the coil is entering the magnetic field is its flux going to increase or decrease increase so when flux is going to increase then what pole is the coil facing it is facing u so when flux is increasing then north pole should get generated this side so when we say north pole what is the direction of current anti clockwise anti clockwise so when you say north pole the current is going to be in the anti clockwise direction right so having said this the answer for the induced current's direction here is c d a b c right what about the second one when the coil is moving away it is moving out of the plane so flux is decreasing so it should be clockwise clockwise yes a c b a what about the third one the potato shaped one sir clockwise clockwise because it is the flux is decreasing so answer will be a b c d a is everyone clear with this so this is one kind of a problem yes sir so like this you have this textbook problems right solve this so what is the answer for the first one sir unless we change the strength of the magnetic field we can't induce that until we change the strength in the sense i mean the value sir no sir uh, we can linearly change the value hmm. because they are asking by using very strong magnets means if you keep using magnets of greater magnetic field strength but they are not moving will you be able to induce or not is the question no sir no. so what is necessary there changing should be magnetic field change in magnetic flux change in magnetic flux is equal. b a closed loop moves normal to a constant electric field between the plates of a large capacitor is the current induced in the loop answer answer yes or no which one sir it depends on magnetic field not on electric field yes answer is no because electric field has nothing to induce emfs okay is the current induced in the loop when it is wholly inside the region between the capacitor plates it has nothing to do with the electric field so that is going to be the answer for the next two points also c a rectangular loop and a circular loop are moving out of uniform magnetic field region to a field free region with a constant velocity in which loop do you expect the induced emf to be constant during the passage out of the field region answer rectangular rectangular why because the the area that is coming out is always a constant whereas for a circle what will happen the curvature keeps changing right what about d predict the polarity of the capacitor in the situation described here see wherever these dotted lines are moving towards the 
point, right? Are you able to see this? So if you're able to see the center, the coil is like that. See, always keep your hand straight so that you're looking at the Sir. straight line. So you're able to see the center turn that face towards you. So when the south pole is moving this side, what will get generated this side? It will be south pole. So when it is going to be south pole, current always flows from higher to lower potential outside the battery. So B will be positive and A will be negative. Similarly, when you move the north pole closer, the other side you will have north pole. The same logic, anti-clockwise current will flow. Okay. So this is how it works. Am I clear with this, guys? Sir? Tell me. Sir, uh, how, uh, in the previous problem, how are we deciding whether uh, we should consider ourselves as North Pole or South Pole? In the previous question, you don't need anything of that sort. No, sir. I mean like uh, the one which you explained. Which one? The B or C? The first example, sir. The lens. This one. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, see, very simple. I'll, I'll, I'll not complicate it. I'm telling you one point. If there is an into mark, paper is south pole. If paper is, if I'll tell you the pole of paper, you're exactly the opposite pole of it. If there is a dot, paper is north pole. That's it. Okay, sir. Okay, because north pole has the property to emit the field lines. That is the reason. Yes, sir. Got it. So remaining problem, there is one, there is 6.1 and 6.2 in the exercise problems. I want you all to try that today. Okay. So since oh, we are sir. safe, happy yeah, safe. Sir, the next question, D subdivision, sir, like, they do not change the magnetic field, right? So how is current? They are changing. Yeah. It is moving. No? It is moving. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, sir. The arrow is blocked. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. The arrow mark mind. is moving. Okay. Sir, in the same, uh, if you, in the same question, E subdivision, sir. Sorry, F subdivision. The question, sir. D is another F field D. Six point one F subdivision, sir. Six point one F, na exercise problem, ah. Ah, yes, sir. One minute. Ah, I got it. One minute. Okay. Mm. Sir, here uh, EMF will not be induced. Yes. Because EMF is equal to zero because due to the straight current carrying conductor, the magnetic field around it is going to be in the same direction as that of the coil. So magnetic field is in this direction and the aerial vector is upwards. So the flux link with this coil is always zero, irrespective of whether you are going to increase or decrease the value of current. Yes, sir. Got it. Got it? Yeah. So, so they are basically... Uh, trying to say like they are increasing and uh, decreasing the intensity of the intensity of the, of the current yes, yes. initially okay. it will be one two three it will keep on going like that so it's decreasing in this case five three four five four three two one like that 
Eight, sir. Got it. Any other doubt? So if there are no more questions, can we wind up? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.